Hi, it's Katrina. The Polynesian people settled over 70 million square miles of the Pacific, and throughout the vast Polynesian Triangle, there are many unique legends with reoccurring values and themes. From tricky shapeshifters to how the Earth was made, here are eight famous characters from Polynesian mythology. Number 8. Maui Remember Maui? He is probably most familiar to you from the movie Moana, so you kind of know what he's like. He is a demigod, those who possess godlike powers while retaining human features and limitations. Maui is a Polynesian demigod from a family of enchanted beings. He lives in a thatched hut, cares for his mother, and tricks his siblings into helping him with his chores, like pulling the islands up from the ocean floor. He is a trickster god, so his personality is mischievous, but his intentions are good. Maui's compassion and great strength are often the central themes of legends about him, which vary slightly between regions. But in all of them, he is a shapeshifter and famous for lassoing the sun with his magical fishhook, jawbone, or rope made of hair. In one story, the sky lowers, inhibiting plant growth and preventing people from standing up straight. One Hawaiian version claims that Maui and his father work together to push the sky upward before it falls completely, saving humankind and life on Earth. In another variation, Maui pushes the sky up after seeking spiritual help from a Hawaiian sorcerer and priest called a kahuna. One tale tells of Maui restraining the sun using magical lassos made from his sister's hair. He does this after his mother complains of the short daylight, and the sun agrees to slow down as it passes through the sky. In Maori mythology, Maui and his brothers capture a massive manta ray. When Maui leaves to fetch a priest, which was required to bless the large catch, his brothers begin hacking at the animal, creating the mountains and valleys of New Zealand's North Island. He also gave humans fire after he stole it from a fire god. Stories of Maui span three regions within the Polynesian Triangle, including Hawaii to the north, New Zealand to the south, and the islands of Fiji, Tahiti, Tonga, and Samoa in between, just to name a few. Number 7. Pai and Vau According to legend, two women named Pai and Vau were the first settlers on the Tuvaluan island of Nanumea in West Polynesia. One day, a Tongan warrior named Tefolaha, who had the ability to turn himself into a spirit, arrived on Nanumea. At first, Tefolaha thought the island was empty, but some footprints led him to Pai and Vau, who were weaving baskets and making garlands. Tefolaha claimed the island for himself, ordering the two women to leave. They steadfastly refused, insisting that Tefolaha should leave unless he knew their names, which he did not. Determined to learn the women's names, Tefolaha changed into spirit form and perched himself on the rafters of Pai and Vau's hut. Then he tied a hook to a string and lowered it near Pai's head, causing Vau to blurt out, Pai, look out, there's a hook near your head. He then lowered the hook near Vau's head, learning her name in the process. Tefolaha once again confronted the women in human form and told them their names, which surprised them. He gave them a chance to tell him his name, and they guessed multiple times, but they couldn't come up with it. Pai and Vau left Nanumea, creating islets in the water as sand spilled from their baskets. They ultimately settled in Kiribati. And now for number six, but first a quick shout out to Arya Reed and Armando Benzel. Thanks so much, you guys, and so glad you liked the list. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to join the Origins Explained family. We'd love to have you! Number 6. Rangi and Papa Rangi Nui and Papa Tuanuku, or Rangi and Papa, are the sky father and earth mother in a Maori creation myth explaining the world's origins. They laid together locked in a tight embrace and had 70 sons who lived between their parents in the cramped darkness. Over time, the children increasingly entertain the idea of living in the light and having more room for things like seas and forests to grow. They encouraged their parents to let go of each other, but both refused and clung even tighter at times as if to suffocate the forming planet. Tane, the god of forests and birds, concluded that the sons must force their parents apart, with Rangi becoming the sky and Papa remaining below to nurture them. Several of the children unsuccessfully tried separating their parents, including Rongo, the god of cultivated food, Tangaroa, the god of the seas, and Haumia Tike Tike, the god of wild food. Finally, Tane succeeded thanks to his strong legs. Light and air infiltrated the world and the brothers set out to infuse it with life, landforms, and heavenly bodies. 
At their mother's advice, they shaped the first woman from red clay and brought her to life, naming her Hine Ahuone. Rangi and Papa are proud of their sons but miss each other. At night, Rangi's tears rain down from the sky and Papa's lonely sighs appear in the form of morning mists. Number 5. Pele Not the soccer player. Pele is the Hawaiian goddess of fire and volcanoes. As a sign of respect, some people call her Madame Pele or Tutu Pele. She's also called Pele Honuamea or she who shapes the sacred land. She was born in Tahiti to the ancient earth goddess Haumea and the creator of the sky and upper heavens Kane Milohai, who had six daughters and seven sons together. Pele's father sent her to the Hawaiian Islands because he was tired of dealing with her explosive temper and because she reportedly seduced her sister, Namakao Kahai's husband. Pele and her brothers sailed to Hawaii on a great canoe that her oldest brother, Kamohoali'i, gifted her. During the voyage, she carried her younger sister, Hiaika, in egg form, making her the first goddess of the family to be born in Hawaii. Namakao Kahai attacked Pele in Hawaii and she fled from island to island, creating craters and volcanoes along the way. The sisters finally engaged in an epic battle in Maui where Pele was torn apart. She died and became a god, then found her current home on the big island in the Halemaumau crater at the summit of Kilauea, one of the world's most active volcanoes, where she remains very happy to this day. Pele's identity is somewhat of a double-edged sword as she's both a creator and a destroyer. She controls lava flows and spews molten fountains into the air, sometimes destroying entire forests and small towns, but also creating new land. Since 1983, the volatile goddess has added more than 70 acres of land to Hawaii's southeastern coast. Number 4. Nina Here Nina Here was a great warrior of Tahiti's secret island, Maupiti. He had an affair with Pahonu, goddess of the Tahitian island Raiatea. Her husband had gone away to war and she became lonely and unhappy. Tired of waiting for him, she left for Maupiti on a shark and met the warrior Nina Here. Perfect for a soap opera. The goddess originally went to the quiet island to sulk in solitude, but instead met Nina Here and took him on as her secret lover. When her fiancé discovered the affair, he placed her under the watch of two guards and also put a curse on her that would turn her into a fish if she ever touched another man again. Pahonu begrudgingly accepted her fiancé's newly imposed rules and left Maupiti. Nina Here was unaware that all of this had happened and believed that Pahonu had voluntarily left him. He broke down in tears on Maupiti's Serea beach where the couple used to meet, leaving his body's imprint in the sand. Number 3. Maru Applying godlike identities and attributes to natural formations is a common theme of Polynesian mythology. Maru was the tallest mountain on the western side of Rorotonga in the Cook Islands. She was very proud but spent the mornings hiding in her shadow, allowing villagers more time to sleep. Her reputation traveled not only to other villages who wished they could have a mountain like Maru but to other islands as well. People on the flat island of Aitutaki were fascinated by what they heard and wanted to see Maru for themselves. The Aitutaki chiefs summoned their strongest warriors and sent them to Rarotonga by canoe. They arrived in the early hours of the night and began cutting away at Maru with plans to transport her back to Aitutaki. Their chopping and exhausted grunting awoke the local Puaikura people who followed the noise and began chasing the warriors. As they ran, the Aitutakians dropped pieces of Maru. They eventually reached their canoes and paddled away before sunrise. The rocks that were meant to build a towering mountain on Aitutaki amounted to a much smaller version, which was named Maungapu. The Puaikura people were upset by Maru's drastically shortened peak at first, but they grew to enjoy the benefits of an earlier sunrise, including better fish catches. Number 2. Mo'o Mo'o are black shape-shifting lizards that grow between 12 and 30 feet long and who appear frequently in Hawaiian folklore. They protect freshwater sources and dwell in caves and fish ponds, often appearing near people's homes at night where there are fires burning. Mo'o can appear in any size, often making them indistinguishable from geckos and as water dragons or beautiful maidens. They're both friendly and hostile, so you don't know which one you're going to get. 
Capable of manipulating the weather, they are known for sweeping trespassers from trails with giant waves and drowning people in their toxic phlegm. But as long as they're not neglected, they usually cause no harm. In fact, when nurtured properly, mo'o provide bountiful harvests and abundant streams. Some believe that when one dies, it becomes part of the landscape. There are many stories about mo'o, mostly highlighting the ancient Hawaiian belief in respecting the land. It is also symbolic in many ways of Hawaiian genealogy and lineage. Number 1. Taniwa in Maori mythology, Taniwa are dragon-like beings that also sometimes resemble whales or sharks. They live in both salt and freshwater environments, including deep rivers, seas, and caves, often favoring dangerous currents and large waves. Some legends claim that they can burrow through the earth, uprooting trees along the way, and sometimes reaching the ocean, thus creating new channels and harbors. Rumor has it that Wellington Harbor, which goes by the Maori name Te Wanganui Atara, was carved out by two Taniwa. In some traditions, Taniwa are highly respected as protective guardians, or kaitiaki, of people and places. They save people from drowning and warn of approaching enemies by communicating through priests. As long as the Taniwa are treated with respect, they tend to reciprocate. Other tales depict them as dangerous and predatory creatures who eat humans and kidnap women as wives. In some cases, they're charged with ensuring that people follow the principles of tapu, a Polynesian concept of spiritual restriction. There are stories of both land and sea battles between humans and Taniwa, with the humans usually outsmarting the Taniwa and emerging victorious. Taniwa are still very much a part of Maori culture, although they now often symbolize a troublesome event or incident rather than an actual creature, according to Maori scholar Rangi Nui Walker. The Maori have argued in various court cases for the stopping of construction in places connected to the Taniwa, including a successful campaign to reroute a state highway and a proposed jail site that was ultimately approved. Thanks for watching! Which one was your favorite? Would you like to learn more about mythical creatures from the South Pacific? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!